Guess who's back? Back mm -hmm. again. Ashley's back. Tell Are we recording? Friend. Yeah. Hello, welcome, thank you for joining us. Ashley is back. I don't think I've ever had such a massive response to a video as we had to the last cooking one. Why are you, you're grunting? I'm not grunting, I didn't say anything. <laughs> um, and you all said you would like to see more of him. Goodness knows why, I'd like to see less. <laughs> thank you for the uh, yeah, marvellous comments. So we thought that, or you thought, that last time the menu we did was quite complicated wasn't it it was quite because we tried to do it on a budget it yeah. made things take a long time and there was a lot of prep this time we're going for easy bistro type dinner that's quite... retro it's retro it's 1970s <laughs> themed as well <laughs> By mistake. <laughs> well, not by mistake. Well, no, 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 it wasn't actually. 1970s themed bistro type yummy dinner. Mm -hmm. Yummy dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounded about five. So, do you want to see what the menu is? Well, to start, we're having prawn cocktail. Now, we thought prawn cocktail, bit naff, but then we thought it is a bit naff, but you all like it really anyway, Everybody don't you? Likes Everyone prawn loves cocktail. a prawn cocktail. Yeah. So, uh, and how easy is that? So, uh, that's going to be the starter. Yep. And then, mm. go on. <laughs> Main course is a marinated fillet of beef served with horseradish, potatoes, Yum, they're lovely. asparagus, and a pork shoe. And tomatoes. Well, and tomatoes. That's just the garnish. I was going. That was, that was going to be a surprise. No, garnish is something you don't eat. Do you eat the tomatoes? No, you should eat garnish. If it's on the plate, you should be eating it. Really? Otherwise, it's superfluous. Well, when you get breakfast in a hotel and you have like parsley garnish on the side you of it, you never have, eat that. You shouldn't have parsley garnish on your breakfast. That's completely <laughs> wrong and a waste All of right. parsley. Alright, so you should eat the garnish, but only when it suits you to do so. No, the garnish should be an integral part of the meal, otherwise it shouldn't be there. Right. <laughs> Garnishes are so complicated. I must um, go and carve some radishes into some roses. <laughs> right, um... So every single Chinese restaurant you have, I often wonder, do they actually take the radishes off the plate? Because no one eats the radish roses, obviously. Or maybe you do, I don't know. Do they put them on the next person's plate as a garnish? <laughs> I think maybe they do. <laughs> no. And then for dessert, I am going to do a really super, super easy. Sorry, I keep banging the table; it wobbles the camera. Super, super easy chocolate mousse, which is very tasty, and that is going to be served with some cherries in liqueur. I.e., Black Forest Gatto. Get the seventies theme, <laughs> right? You see, um, deconstructed, deconstructed Black Forest, Black Forest Gatto. Gatto. <laughs> right, and. Um, Alongside that, we're having a bottle of Matthews Rosé and a bottle of Leaf Brown Milch. <laughs> no, we're we not. Not. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. Can you even get, I mean, you can get Matthews Rosé because we had some in Portugal, didn't we? You've also got to say at this point that we thought, I think I mentioned this the other day briefly, that we are going to do some more of these videos and we thought it would be fun to get you guys involved to do a sort of ready, steady cook thing whereby you suggest five ingredients and we pick one of the suggestions and we create a meal or a dish or a menu around those five ingredients. We watched Ready, Steady, Cook yesterday to it, familiarise It was ourselves. research, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's worried that he's got to go and have a spray tan like what's his name and no. the bit of, we've got to have the hair dyed jet black as well <laughs> <laughs> is it Rylan Rylan who right. presents that isn't it yeah he was looking a bit orange but um I thought he was an albino bloke off the voice no that was Ridia oh no, sorry that was someone else it wasn't the voice it was um the Simon Cowell one I don't know what anyway. happened to him came from Wales Maybe he's gone back to Wales. <laughs> Maybe he has, I don't know. Um, yeah, so if you have five ingredients that you'd like us to create a dish around, pop them in the comments and we will pick one and that will be our next video. Mm -hmm. um, right, we've got some prep to do, have we? Moving swiftly to the kitchen. There's very little prep in the whole meal. This is That's good. quick and easy and should look really good in the end. So, More importantly, should taste really good as well. Oh, is that important? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very. Very. Right. right. So there is a little bit of prep you need to do in advance. We're doing it now. <laughs> what we're doing first is marinating the fillet of beef. This is a tail of uh, tail of fillet. Um, that weighs about 12 ounces. That would probably do three people quite nicely. If I was cooking for four, I'd have chosen a nicer piece of centre cut fillet, but it would be too much for uh, just the two of us. I've got some fresh rosemary from the garden, which oh, I smells smell lovely. gorgeous. I'm chopping up with scissors. scissors, yeah. I'm making a horrible mess on the floor. Okay, well, Caroline can clean it up afterwards. <laughs> Pestle and mortar. This actual recipe is sort of based on a Jamie recipe from years and years and years ago, but I made it even simpler. Rosemary, two cloves of garlic, is that all you're going to put in there? I'm going to put a bit more in that. Oh, three cloves of garlic. Yeah, heavy on the garlic. Sea salt. Lots and lots of black pepper. That smells lovely just by itself. Just, you can't really smash up the rosemary, so you're just bruising the rosemary, smashing up the garlic. It just brings the flavour out, doesn't it? Because it, it, all the oils. Start. Tiny splash. So we've got it like Literally. that texture. Yeah. Go on, sorry. Tiny splash of vegetable oil, oil on the meat. Literally, tiny bit. It vegetable oil vegetable rather oil. than. Vegetable oil rather than olive oil, it has a higher um, burning point, so when you cook your steak, it doesn't burn. Done. Leave for at least a couple of hours. We're doing it at, I don't know, 10 o'clock in the morning, it'd be perfect by dinner time. Yeah. Right, I'm going to make a start on the dessert, which is the easiest chocolate mousse ever. Easy and quick. It's based on a Nigella Lawson recipe from a long, long time ago. I've been making this one for a long time. Right, this recipe serves six people. And you have 150 grams. Oh, sorry if you can hear the rugby in the background. That's Ashley watching. Whoever's playing rugby, I've no idea. So 150 grams of mini marshmallows. You don't necessarily have to have mini ones because they're gonna be melted. You can have any size you like. 50 grams of butter, 250 grams of dark chocolate, a 300 ml size double cream, some vanilla extract, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and that's for later on, that's some cherries in Kish. Um, so you start off by melting the butter, the chocolate, the marshmallows together with 60 ml of water from a recently boiled kettle. Right, we've got that melting over a low heat, just all melting together. I've added the water as well. And keep an eye on that, keep stirring it to keep, make sure it's combined and don't let it over melt, if you know what I mean. Meanwhile, we will, I've just put the cream and about one and a bit teaspoons of vanilla extract in here. And I am going to whip that with my, what is this thing called? That thing. So you should end up with something, the cream's fairly thick, not like whipped cream, but thickened. And this, and then you fold the cream into the chocolate mixture, leave it to cool a little bit to start with, then fold it in and mix it well. And this is what you should end up with. Look at how delicious that looks. And I'm gonna serve it in these two glasses. And here they are, all ready for the cherries to go on the top. I forgot to say at this point, this is future editing Caroline here, that this mousse is set in about 20 minutes. So you pop them into the fridge and they will be ready to eat in about 20 minutes, fully set. Okay, so it's two hours before you want to serve. 
I'm putting the fan oven on 170. All this whizzing round. The meat that's been marinating all day comes out of the oven, so it comes, no, it comes to room out the fridge. Comes out the fridge, <laughs> so yes. So it comes up to room temperature. It would be a bit tough if it had been in the oven since 11 o'clock this morning. <laughs> you ready to it out? Yeah. Asparagus. You've dropped one. Yeah, we're not using that one. Oh, that an extra. So we're cutting it all to some length just for one bit. Like that. Are you shaving the asparagus? I'm shaving the asparagus, yeah, just because it's just a shaky thing to do. It doesn't take time at all. Does it make it taste better? Um. I don't think it makes any difference at all. You can do it without shaving it, but I was watching a cooking program this morning and yeah, they they said the skin it. was tough and this is more chefy, so we're we're just going for a bit more chefy because we've got plenty of time. This is an easy, quick menu. Should just point out it's not asparagus season in the UK at the moment. We should probably be having kale or something because that's not the season. <laughs> no. Asparagus season is... I've always wanted to grow asparagus, actually. It takes a number of years. Yeah. We just don't have the patience in this land of instant gratification. Yeah, asparagus season is like May time, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think. So not long. So potatoes. I use approximately one large potato per person. And this is really a cheat version of Dauphinoise, which is easy and requires no skill. Is that why you're so good at it? Absolutely. <laughs> Doing really good dolphin wires is yeah, quite skillful. This just works every time. I learned an interesting thing this week. Did I tell you this? Um, if you do, we have a potato ricer for mashing potatoes and it will take the skin out. You can cook your potatoes with the skin on and the ricer won't put the skin through. So you don't need to peel potatoes if you're going to mash them with the ricer. <laughs> You don't look convinced by this. No, I do. It's a good idea. You do have to make sure you put them there. Okay, the last thing is the tomatoes. Which oh, the, the tomatoes which aren't a vegetable, they're a garnish. That's what you said this morning. Well, well they're an essential garnish because the flavour does contribute to the overall dish. So, I'm Why just... are you rejecting some? I got that wrong, didn't I? There's only five on that one and there's six on that. There we go, oh well. There's seven so on that one. one. Oh! There right, there we go. I put the asparagus in the oven because it's easy and it comes out at the same time as everyone, everything else. So I wrap it in foil. No, no salt and pepper or anything else. Oh. oh yes. I wet it, just to make sure it's nice. I get rid of the water. And I will put a knob of butter and some salt in there as well. Yep. Marinara sauce, mayonnaise, Hellman's, other brands are available. Yeah. One third of the amount of mayonnaise in terms of ketchup. Tabasco. Shake of Tabasco. Quarter of a lemon per person that you are making the sauce for. This is enough sauce for two. Half a lemon then. Yeah. And one of the ingredients I didn't get out. What was it? Pat the pan? No. No? Worcester sauce. Worcester sauce. Good shake of Worcester sauce. So, what's this for? This is for the sauce for the potatoes. So one ounce per person, that's approximately two ounces. And then 100 mils for two people of milk. I reckon this amount you're doing would actually do three people. 100 mils of cream. One big spoonful of horseradish sauce per person. It's not the healthy dinner, this, is it? And one 
what I do now is I stick that in the microwave for a couple of minutes to get warm. Oh, okay. So while the sauce is warming in the microwave. How thick are you doing now? Five mil. Maybe six mil. I reckon the amount you've said is enough for three for sure. Because if Will was home we wouldn't do more than this, would we? It would be the same amount. Well, probably. Be left but over. this is really, really nice the next day. <laughs> <laughs> enough for two with leftovers the following day. So you slice and lay your potato and season it exactly as you would with a traditional dolphin wine. So that's now warmed up because it's been in the microwave for a couple of minutes and all of those ingredients have combined and Ashley has almost finished layering the potatoes. This would do for... If you wanted to speed this up, oh, if you right. didn't have as much time, you can cook the potatoes yes. if you in... If you've only got 40 minutes or so, whack the potatoes in the microwave for... 10 minutes after you put the sauce on and that will get you way ahead. Pour over the pre-prepared sauce mixture. Cover in the foil. In the oven for maybe hour and a half up to 170 fan. Cool. Okay, we're about 30 minutes before we want to serve the meal. We are going to get the potato that's been for maybe an hour and 15 minutes in the oven. Yum! They yeah. smell good. They look good, they smell good. We're going to check that they're cooked all the way through. They pretty much are. Again, bit of a cheat, not used with traditional dolphin wires, but really nice. We're going to put some cheese on the top. Why do you call them dolphin Dol wires? There's no Dol dolphin in there. <laughs> Dolphin was. Okay. Love a dolphin potato. Yeah. Right. So we've uncovered them. Put some cheese on. We're going to pop them back in the oven. Without the lid on. Without the lid on, yeah. Okay. We have them on our ready to stay, which is looking lovely. It's been out for a little while to get it to room temperature before cooking. Yep. They will go in about 10 to 15 minutes before the end they'll go into the oven and so you just pull them out together and serve them there's no other pans or anything to deal with it so enjoy again. Prawns. Prawns. What prawns are you using? They're hand dived organic prawns from the local <laughs> prawn market. Uh, we're swimming in the sea less than 15 minutes before I'm actually, they're no, not. they're from Iceland, they're frozen. <laughs> the only thing you need to actually make sure is you can frost them properly and make them dry before you mix them in or cook them with anything, otherwise they're really watery. And uh, I've So, yeah, soak them, put the kitchen paper over the top yes, and yeah. soak up and all the... And then nice and dry down everything. What I'm gonna do, you could do it the other way around, you could put the sauce over at the end, but in this instance, I'm going to take the prawns. Mix them in the sauce. Mix them in the sauce that we made earlier. And they'll be ready to serve on a bed of lettuce with a piece of lemon and a bit of paprika for a garnish in 20 minutes time when... Uh, in a very nice 1970s style. Mm, excellent. We were going to be playing ABBA records throughout <laughs> the entire uh, yeah, uh, production yeah, yeah, we were. Um, but unfortunately, Caroline's told me we can't for copyright reasons. But <laughs> Benny and Bjorn, if you're out there and you're watching this video, just <laughs> ping us over an email now <laughs> saying we can and uh, Caroline will change the backing track. <laughs> we're about ready for our starter, about maybe 20 minutes away from the main course. I've turned the oven up to 200 fan. I'm popping the package of asparagus into the oven with the potatoes. And I'm going to prepare the starter. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. It's very complicated. What, you're gonna cut up the lettuce I'll and serve it with some prawns and a bit of prawn. lemon? Yeah, absolutely, and make <laughs> some paprika. So, Make some paprika. Uh, maybe some paprika. Sprinkle some paprika. 
And it's time for prawn cocktail. Excuse the horrible light and shadows. Unfortunately, it's we should ought to be cooking and eating at lunchtime because the light is so much better. <laughs> Yum. What are we doing now? We are starting to prepare the main course. I've put a pan on. We have the steak which is now at room temperature. Mm -hmm. La 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 la. Dancing queen, feel the beat <laughs> from the tambourine. Oh yeah, the meat already has a little bit of uh, oil on it, so we'll just go straight in the pan. And what I want to do here is I want to seal the meat, but I don't want to burn the garlic and the herbs because I'm going to use them to make the sauce. Right. It takes maybe 30, 40 seconds a side, and you've probably got three stroke four sides, depending on the sh depending on the shape of your pieces. Yeah, so if it's square, it would have four sides. If it was octagonal, then it would take considerably longer yeah. and be quite unusual. Well, it doesn't take long, as you can see. So I've sealed this. Yeah. I'm going to pop that in the oven for about 10... What was that, a little dance? A no, little you have to like change it for the shape and size yeah. of your uh, your piece of meat. Yes. Um, but this minutes. one, this is quite a small piece, so ten to twelve minutes will probably mm -hmm. make it medium, medium rare. The oven's on two hundred now. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna pop the tomatoes in for about ten minutes of that as well, so yeah. that everything will come out of the oven ready at the same time. No other pans, no other pots. It's easy. Yeah. We're popping the tomatoes in. We're chucking a little olive oil. A little sugar. A little salt. That's going to burn. It's That's really not. high. Because, at this point, I'm deflating it with some pork. Any particular type of pork, just any old pork. Just a ruby pork or a red wine, whichever you have. It's about. Is that the one I lots. gave you for Christmas? Not sure it is, no. Um, if you're using red wine rather than pork, it probably doesn't have quite enough sweetness, so a spoonful of. Um, Sugar. No, 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 hmm. no. Um, red currant jelly would be perfect. Yeah. Who knew? And so obviously the flavours of the garlic and the rosemary that were around the steak are going in there along with yeah, some of the juices from the steak. I'm going to implement a little known culinary, culinary secret first introduced by Marco Pierre White. Not a lot of people know about this, you know. Uh, at the height of his uh, culinary genius, he invented the North Stock Cube, and I'm going to, and I'm going to stick half of one of those into this. Um, a beef one, no doubt. A beef, yes, a beef one. Yeah. Thank you, Marco. You are a genius. Everything else is going to be getting together. We're going to add some butter to this at the last minute to make the jus. Looks good. Action. Action. Steaks begin for I think about 13, 14 minutes because it's a visit. Actually, I can see that everything else is absolutely ready, so I'm going to turn the oven off. Now, sometimes on cooking programs, etc., they leave this to complete guesswork as to whether you know, it's done right or not. You don't have to do this in this instance. I think at this point you should check by cutting through the middle and I can see that that is exactly how I would like it. Now, obviously if you like it done more, 20 minutes will make mm -hmm. it absolutely well done. If you like it mooing, which isn't a bad concept, 10 minutes be perfect, right? Your sauces. Sauces over here. Right, I'm going to transfer my meat onto a cutting board mm -hmm. and I'm also going to put it on a piece of tin foil and I'm going to run the juices 
off the meat into my sauce. So the meat's there, that does need to rest for three or four minutes. At this point, the potatoes look perfect. So I'm just taking Yum. those, they're immensely hot, so I'm gonna take those straight to the dining table. That's my gym. I like it without the herbs and stuff in it. You could just serve it rustic, but I'm gonna pass it. Really and then throw it all over yourself. Yeah, I throw it all over myself, fortunately. Add cubes of butter to make it shiny and delicious. And here it is. Looking absolutely delicious. There's the potatoes. Got potatoes on already. Arguably a little bit overdone. You could have done it for two minutes or three minutes less, but there we go. Looks nice to me. And finally, we're both rather full, so we're going to split a chocolate mousse with cherries on the top. Inspired by Black Forest Gatto. Yeah. There are many good things about that meal. But one of the best is that there's so little washing up, isn't there? Mm. Because there's no, most of it's cooked in the oven. And yeah, no saucepans and very yeah, minimal in easy. terms of preparation. It is very easy, very tasty and very low maintenance, I guess. Cool. How are you getting on with the chocolate mousse? It's delicious. I've just got to the end of editing this video and I've realised that we never filmed an outro for it um, or finished it off in any way. So I thought I would just jump back on quickly and say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed that one. And do leave us your ideas for five ingredients around which you'd like us to create a dish or a meal um, and we will pick one of your suggestions and that will be the next video. I think that will be quite a fun one to do. So um, you can challenge us as much as you like with your list of ingredients but they have to be things we can get hold of obviously um so yeah i hope you enjoyed that guys thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next one bye bye